Good evening. 
Good evening. I guess all of you have joined. Let's turn all your cameras. We'll start the plot shortly. First, let me go through the homework. I think I've already checked all of your homeworks. Um, let's just discuss the answers. Okay. Okay, we'll start with critics homework. So the question I asked was, why do humans vomit? So Krithwik, can you tell me what did you learn? Can you tell me your answer? Yes, ma'am. Well, sometimes the food is not accepted by the system. It's like your uh, least favorite food or something you get. So the system sends back the food to your esophagus and to your buccal cavity. Hence, humans vomit. Okay, okay, very good. So that is the correct answer. Okay, all of you. Okay, Varshit, can you tell me the answer to the next question? Why does stomach secrete mucus? We like the color, the stomach has two layers, layered mucus system. The inner mucus layer build around MUC5AC acts as a deficient barrier for hydrochloride acid. The surface Epithelial cell secretes epithelial epithelial cell secretes bicar bicarbonate bicarbonate cre creating a pH gradient formed gradient from the acid lumen the nutrient Neutral pH at the cell surface. That's it. Okay, so you got this completely from Google. I'm pretty sure you didn't understand any word of it, do you? Next time, even if it's wrong, when you're trying to write the answer, write the answer that is more understandable, okay? Yes, okay, yes. so uh, what is answer? It's actually correct, but I know most of you all have not even heard certain terms over there. So it's, what he has written is, so like the colon, colon is nothing but uh, it's the, uh, which we'll be talking about in today's class. Okay. So we have uh, three parts of the large intestine. Okay. We have the jejunum, we have the colon and we have the rectum. Okay. So you also have three parts for the small intestine. Okay. So here the colon is part of the large intestine. So here, like the colon, the stomach also has two layers. So colon is part of the large intestine, which has two layers, okay? So he has mentioned the stomach also has two layers, mucus. So it has a two layer of mucus system. So the inner mucus, there are two layers of mucus system, okay? One layer of mucus system is inside. So that is built in MC, MUC 5AC. That is nothing but, uh, it's like, um, it's a protein layer or it's an inbuilt layer, like a skin layer, okay? On top of that layer, you have mucus. What will happen there? Diffusion happens. Diffusion happens means you know what is diffusion, right? When one water is passing from one medium to another. So in the stomach, you know that the proteins is being converted into amino acids. So basically, the, all this diffusion will occur only with the presence of the mucus. And second, it also helps with the hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a certain pH level. pH level means acidity level. Okay. So there's only certain pH level that we can tolerate. Okay. So some pH levels. If such acids are broke, what, like, uh, what? You know, acid attack and all, right? You throw it on your face, your face and all will, if you get burned because of acid, that is a high pH, okay? So the lower the pH, the lower the concentration, okay? The higher the pH, the higher the concentration. So here we have high pH in our stomach. So to protect our, um, uh, what to say, our, our stomach from burning, mucus is present. That is what is mentioned, pH gradient. Okay. Now, Anubhav, I hope you understood it. Did you guys understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Anubhav, can you um, answer the last question? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, the villi facilitates more absorption. It's called as villi. Their... It's the villi. Okay. okay. The villi facilitates more absorption area for their finger-like projections in the small intestine. They increase their surface area for absorption. Digested, molecule, digested food molecules enter through the bloodstream of the villi and 
through the capillaries it goes to the other parts of the body okay so what we said is there is basically it's the same thing whatever i said so there are a lot of blood capillaries that is present in the villi so this villi provides a area so large surface area for all the blood capillaries to carry the nutrients that is required for our body through the blood okay now let's continue wherever we stopped i'll just share my screen shortly Okay, so let's continue. So last in class, we saw the what is assimilation. We saw what assimilation is. Yes. Can anyone tell me what assimilation is? Any of you? Okay. What is assimilation? What do we see? Anyone else? Oh, uh, ma'am, can I share? Yeah, sure. Um, ma'am, when the amino acids are uh, built, ma'am, we like, uh, ma'am, the amino acids are built to proteins, ma'am, and uh, then again, the, sorry, ma'am, again, I'll do it. Uh, ma'am, the proteins are uh, converted into amino acids, and mm -hmm. then again, the amino acids are uh, converted into proteins, because uh, whatever the bacteria is right now, some bad okay. very good very good so you can see so proteins are broken down into amino acids and again the amino acids are converted into protein this is for the purification of all the food that we're eating to prevent it from the chemical or food poisoning that is there okay this is what assimilation is this is what we saw finally and we saw that all the anti-acid food will go to the large intestine so uh, we saw about absorption in the small intestine and we also saw the different juices sorry uh, the different conversion of carbohydrates fats and proteins okay so first we also saw the small intestine is a highly coiled small like a uh, highly coiled meter that are 7.5 meters and we saw what the liver is what the color of the liver is and what each function of the liver is okay now we'll be talking about large intestine Okay, so the large intestine is, is more wider. Now you can see the small intestine is like this, okay? Like if I'm drawing the small intestine straight and long, it will look something like this, okay? Whereas the large intestine looks like this. It's more shorter, but it's more wider. Okay, you know the difference? So this is the small intestine this is the large intestine this is how it looks like so it's more larger and wider this is small and narrow all right so what its function mainly is, so since I told you all the undigested food or the unabsorbed food will go to the large intestine, you know the function of the small intestine. What is the function of the small intestine for converting? Basically, assimilation process. The villi will do and all this thing is the function of the small intestine. What is the function of the large intestine is just to, now this unabsorbed food is there, no? In the unabsorbed food, there will be 
So this is the unabsorbed food, for example. This unabsorbed food will have certain amount of water in it. Okay, this water is finally absorbed. This is the function of the large intestine. So basically absorption of the water from the food. Okay, so its function is to absorb water and some salts, salt, water and salt, both of them are absorbed. Okay, from the undigested food material. Then finally, what will happen? Then what it gets converted into? It gets converted into Pieces. Pieces is nothing but waste. Okay, so piece of matter, it finally gets converted into that is removed through anus. This process of removing the pieces through the anus is called as excretion. Or adjacent. Adjacent is the most commonly used term. Now you know the meaning of ingestion and adjacent. Okay, so your homework question is Did you understand? Hello? Yes, okay. So this yes, is what happens in the large intestine. Okay, so what happens in the large intestine? All the unabsorbed food from the small intestine goes to the large intestine. All the water and salts from the unabsorbed food is absorbed in the large intestine. After all the absorption takes place, it gets the, the fecal matter, that is a waste product, is removed out of our body through our anus and this process is known as excretion or adhesion. Whereas the large intestine is more large and wider than the small intestine which is small and narrow. Okay, so now this is actually what happens in us human beings. We human beings are omnivores. Okay, and now we're going to see how does this digestion process takes place in the herbivores. Herbivores are grass-eating animals. Okay. For that, you can just copy this quickly. It's very small only, so just copy it and let me know.
completed all of you all all three of you all no ma'am please wait yes ma'am Yes, ma'am. Done. Okay. Varsha John above. Let's make all of your yes, Okay. Now let's go back to where we stopped. That is how digestion happens in the herbivores. Now, uh, have you seen cows, buffaloes? Uh, you go all of you all from Hyderabad, right? Yes, ma'am. Are cows and all there in Hyderabad? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so have you seen cows? Normally, like there will be no grass, there will be nothing down. They won't eat anything, but they'll be continuously chewing. Have you noticed that? Yes, ma'am. What do you think they are continuously chewing? Ma'am, ma I think uh, ma'am, this toast uh, put in the stomach and the, again it comes back to their uh, buccal cavity, ma'am, and then they chew. What is that called? Uh, okay, um, we'll see. So, okay, so it's really nice that you know this much of information. So, what the uh, exactly what does Kitsik said? So, what these cows do, they first eat the grass. Okay, so they what they do is they won't bite the grass, they'll just swallow the grass, they'll cut the grass, swallow the grass. Okay, and then they will store it in a part of the stomach. Okay, so. I just one minute, I'll just draw it, show it to you. Just think uh, how the um, stomach of the cow looks like. So the cow will have a small intestine and then um, he has first the esophagus, okay? So the food goes through the esophagus, okay? It goes to the esophagus, and then there is a portion over here called as the reticulum, and here you have a stomach part called the omasum. Okay, this is the biggest. This is the stomach. This part is the stomach. Okay, it's called the abomasum. Abomasum is the biggest stomach, the part, big part of the stomach. Okay, so after the stomach, you know, it directly goes to the small intestine. Obviously, same like human beings. Okay, so this is the stomach part. So this region, now this part. This part is the is where the grass is stored. Okay, this part is where the grass is stored, and this part of the stomach of the green eating or grass eating animals is called as the rumen. Okay, so the green uh, grass is just cut and it is directly swallowed by the cow and it is stored in the rumen okay so this rumen from the rumen what happens it again goes back to the esophagus and back to the mouth okay so what they do is they quickly swallow the grass and they store it in a part of the stomach which is called the rumen so this food what will happen partial digestion takes place here so what happens in the rumen partial digestion takes place not complete digestion. So it will be half digested. Okay. Partial digestion takes place. So after partial digestion takes place. Now this is the partially digested grass. Okay. The dark green one. So partial digestion takes place and it will create this substance which is called as the curd. Okay, this partial digested grass called as the cud. Okay, so this cud is later returned back to the stomach, the mouth. Sorry, it goes back to the mouth. 
mouth again. Okay, small in small quantities. Not connect completely to the grout doesn't go. Small small quantities are sent back to the mouth, and again the animal will chew. Okay, this whole process of first you can see. Look at the arrows. So first it goes inside the mouth. You can see the grass goes inside, gets stored in the rumen. From the rumen, it gets partially digested, and then it creates the cud. The cud and the cud from the cud it moves in small quantities to the mouth back again, and again the animal will chew. This whole process is known as rumination. Okay, and such grass eating animals are called as ruminants. Okay, so this is the term that you use for cows and buffaloes and everything. They are called ruminants. Why are they call ruminants? Because they chew their they chew their foot twice. Okay. That is after converting into a cud. Okay, so this grass that they eat, it is rich in cellulose. Cellulose is like raw material. Basically, cellulose is what starch only. Okay, so this cellulose it cannot be directly like um, since I told you, you know, in the start of the like first in nutrition in plants. I told you uh, the nitrogen cannot be directly absorbed by the plants, but instead, what a bacteria in the soil will convert it. What is the bacteria name called as? Um, rhizobium. Rhizobium. So this rhizobium will convert this nitrogen into a more simpler form that can be consumed. Okay. Similarly. In this uh, cellulose, since we cannot directly consume it, so this cellulose, what it's a type of carbohydrate, okay? So ruminants like cattle, deer, and all, and uh, etc. All this inside the rumen, there is a bacteria. On the name of the bacteria, uh, you're not learning it for this grade. So there's a bacteria that is present in the present in the rumen of the ruminants okay so humans and nobody else can normally animals they cannot easily digest the cellulose so animals like uh, these ruminants they tend to have bacteria that help in absorption of or uh, digestion of Okay, so uh, yeah, this is how the whole uh, cud making process and everything goes on. Okay, so if you see small animals like horses or um, rabbits and all, you can see there is like a small, uh, what do you see? Uh, I told you know jejunum, uh, cecum, colon, and all. So there are different parts of the intestine. So there is a part called as the cecum. Okay, the cecum is present in some of the grass-eating animals, such as rabbits and horses. So this part of the body is actually present between the esophagus and the intestine. Okay. So I will show you. Now, uh, for example, if um, this is the esophagus, you will have a small bulgy portion and then you will have the intestine. Okay, so this, so this is the esophagus. The cecum. The 
your small intestine. Okay, so all in this cecum, what happens? It's only in some grass eating animals, okay? Cellulose is digested. All right. So the cellulose of the food is digested here. It's digested here. But so here also you will have certain bacteria. And these bacteria will be acting upon it. On the cellulose for it to be digested. Okay. I have a call coming, guys. Just copy this. I'll talk. I'll continue. Hello. Solida. Solida Kigada. Okay. Ama. Ah, any Shreya Solita no idea. Is the table done? Can you like send it to me for reference? Okay, okay, I'll, okay, I'll do that. 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 I'll do Yeah, I'll upload it and also upload it. Okay, okay, okay. I'll send both of it to you. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Did you guys understand? You guys have any doubt? No, no. Mom, no. What about the rest of you all? Done, ma'am. Done, Done? ma'am. Okay, fine. Okay, so uh, you know that. Okay, tell me the basic, uh, uh, what do you say? Organs that you need for the digestion to take place. Uh, like you would know, no, if, okay, this, if this organ is not there, 
then digestion cannot take place. So what is that such organs? Prithvik, you tell me one. Everybody tell me one. Prithvik, tell me one. Mm. Anything that you feel, if this organ is not there, digestion cannot take place. Now, for example, I'll tell you. If mouth is not there, digestion cannot take place. Because if mouth is not there, the person cannot eat itself. Now, um, Prithvik, you tell me. Mm. Try, ma'am. Uh, because of uh, ma'am, small intestine and large intestine. Okay, small intestine, large intestine. Varshit, can you try? Ma'am, stomach. Stomach, okay. Annabelle? Ma'am, because of esophagus and stomach. Okay, esophagus and stomach. Very good. That's very... So you can see that the whole elementary canal is required for the digestion processes, right? So if this is not there, the whole digestion cannot occur. So you know, but there are some microbial, some organisms that is not visible to your eyes, okay? So such uh, some animals, they do not have, uh, what do you say, they do not have a mouth, they don't have an elementary canal, they don't have a digestive system itself. Okay. So you can ask how do the food get digested? How do they catch the food? How do they excrete the food? And how, so how does all this process take place? And that's what we're going to see now. Gonna see. Have you guys heard the name amoeba? Have you guys heard the name amoeba? Yes, ma'am. What is amoeba? Ma'am, it is a unicellular organism. Exactly. So it's a unicellular organism. It's a single celled organism. Okay. okay so this is how actually an amoeba looks like. Be more specific. These are the parts of an amoeba. Okay, so this is how an amoeba looks like, and now we're going to see how here is the digestion. Before that, your next question will be. Okay, so we're going to see how this amoeba being a single celled organism and you can see that there is no face itself it doesn't have a body a proper it has a body but it doesn't have any proper parts or organs okay so this amoeba over here that you see in front of you it is a small single celled organism and is normally found in pond water okay so this amoeba it has a cell membrane basically it has a membrane that is a double layer okay outside you can see dot 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 no so sir uh, what do you say? That's a, like a cell membrane. Okay, that is there. Okay. So it has a dense nucleus, the central nucleus, you can see. That is the central purple color. Can you see? That is the nucleus. Okay. So the dense nucleus, and you can see small, small bubble kind of things like blue color. They are called as the vacuoles. Okay. So you can see that is the water vacuole that is there. You also have the food vacuole. So water vacuole is where the water is stored, food vacuole is where the food is stored. Okay. And um, you have. Uh, the contractile vacuole, which I'll be telling what it is. And you have uh, pseudopodia. Pseudopodia is called as the feet of the amoeba. Okay. Just look at the names of what I'm actually spelling out only. So pseudopodia, P-S-E-U. So whereas P is silent. So here that is like the feet, which basically helps the amoeba to move and capture food. I'll be showing a video of how it captures food. Okay, now you will understand better. So amoeba constantly, it will it will not be in a fixed shape. It keeps changing its shape. You can see it itself looks like a liquid that is being splat. 
so it keeps changing its shape and amoeba constantly changes its position also it pushes one or more finger like projections you can see there are so many finger like projections okay and these finger like projections are known as pseudopodia or it's also known as false feet okay there's also known as false feet in greek the word pseudo means false okay true and false you know no false okay so it's called false feet and this helps in the capturing and movement of amoeba so what this amoeba itself is a microscopic organism so definitely what will amoeba amoeba feed on it will feed on things that is more smaller than it that is microscopic okay so microscopic organisms only amoeba will feed on okay so if it sees any food so if it senses any food means it will what it will do is it will um, like your like for example your um, you're seeing something in front of you you're seeing a chocolate you're putting both your hand forward and you're catching the chocolate you're grabbing the chocolate and you're pulling it towards yourself similarly when an amoeba senses food it will put its pseudopodia out okay it will gather it around the food particle and it will eat the food like that okay and this food is stored or trapped in the food vacuum which you can see in the image okay some digestive juices are also secreted all the digestive juices are secreted into the food vacuum these digestive juices like similar to like um, uh, hcl and bile juice and liver uh, being secreting Uh, all these acids and hormones. Similarly, the digestive juices are secreted inside the food vacuole of the amoeba also. So when they act on the food, what they will do? They will again break them into simple substances. Same like what is happening inside the stomach. Okay. So this is broken down into simple substances, and gradually all the food that is digested. So gradually the digested food is absorbed by the body of the amoeba. So the absorbed food now it is used for the maintenance, growth, and growing and uh, reproduction of the amoeba okay so here also they will have undigested food similar no you know so like we are having feces that is sent out through uh, anus so here also they will have undigested residue or undigested food particles of the food now this will be sent out by the another vacuole that is the contractile vacuole through that it will be sent out of the body so the basic process of digestion of the food and the release of energy it is so you can see again what is happening They're seeing the food, they're catching the food, digesting the food, sending out the waste. So this is the whole process that happens in all the animals. All right. So now, um, after this part, what you'll be seeing is you'll be seeing how the food is being absorbed into the intestine. In the intestine, in detail, what actually happens in different parts of the body is what you will be seeing in another part of the lecture. Okay. So let me just um, show you the video. Maybe you can take notes of it. Like not exactly. You need not copy the complete thing. Whatever you understand, you can just copy it and write it. Tell me when to play. Okay, write on the notes. Like take points. Or do one thing. I'll play the video. Like I read whatever is being displayed. And write whatever you understand from it. You know, write the exact same thing. Okay. Can I play the video? Yes, ma'am. So you can see down the food particle is coming. So when a food particle comes near the amoeba, then the amoeba will produce two soda podia, like two hands. To put it around the foot, so you can see the foot particle. Look at the foot particle carefully. Around now, it created foot particle. This surrounding itself. So this vacuole, the term vacuole is nothing but hole. Okay. 
so basically when you what you try to put both hands in the front and you close it like that you can see a hole is there between your face and between your uh, elbows right that is the vacuole similarly so you are covering the foot so there's a hole in between your body and the hand that is called as the vacuole two pseudopodia they'll join around the foot particle and they'll trap the foot they'll with little water <laughs> So as you can see, the foot particles are being broken into small substances. So the foot vacuole, it will contain digestive enzymes to break down the foot down the nutrients into undigested food. The nutrient from the foot, it is directly absorbed by the body in the amoeba and that major part of the body is called as the cytoplasm. So it is all the whole dark green part of the body, cytoplasm. Okay. Now you can see enough nutrients are taken out. So they have to throw all the waste out of the body. Okay, so undigested waste are simply thrown out of the body through rupture anywhere. Anywhere in the cell wall, it will just push the push the waste outside. Okay. <laughs> I hope it is clear to all of you all. It was very clearly mentioned in the video. It was very clear, I hope so. So, this is how feeding and digestion occurs in the amoeba. So, since I've showed you the video, I want you to explain in words how food is digested in the amoeba. Mom, should we say it or uh, it's a homework question? It's a homework question now. Okay. All right. Maybe you can take a note of this down. Tell me if you're done. We'll have a small quiz now after you're done. So tell me when you're done. Uh, just name the food vacuole, water vacuole, contractile vacuole, nucleus, which is the purple part, then the, um, pseudopodia. That's enough. You need not mention plasma gel, plasma soul, and all. No need. Complete the menu. Yeah, let the rest also complete. Yes, ma'am, done. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we'll start with the question. Okay, so uh, I'll just tell you the order, how you guys are supposed to answer it's the oral question I'm going to ask right now. So it's going to be Krithvik, Varshit, Anubhav. Okay, so first question, Krithvik will answer, Varshit will answer, Anubhav will answer. Then next, automatically, Krithvik should answer, Varshit should answer, Anubhav should answer. Okay, I won't be calling out names. Okay, so to start off with, what is absorption? 
Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, absorption is basically like, uh, ma'am, to, uh, uh, ma'am, to break down the food into simpler substances and then to uh, uh, absorb the nutrients from it. Okay. Okay. So basically, yeah, that's right. So you do not see breakdown and all, but yeah, it's just how uh, they convert into simpler substances and they're absorbed by part of the body. And you should also say how it is supplied to the rest part of the body. It's not just absorbed in one region. It's being spread to all the other parts of the body also. Okay. Okay. Next question. Name the main five steps of nutrition in humans. Ma'am, can you repeat the question? Name the main five steps of nutrition in humans. I already told one step. So now you just need to say the remaining. First step, Prithvik told. Second, third, fourth, fifth. Ten. Ma'am, Absorbing. Okay. Breaking it down to simpler forms. Will that be your step? Ma'am, digestion. Okay. Actually, first one, absorption won't come. After digestion, only absorption will come. So first step, yeah. Think again. What did I teach you in the beginning of the lesson? What do you do first? First is chewing, ma'am. It's called, I gave you a term for it. It starts with I and ends with N. Can any of y'all try? Starts with I, ends with N. Ma'am, ingestion. Ingestion, very good. After ingestion, digestion. After digestion, absorption. After absorption? Excretion. No, two more steps are there. Before excretion, one more step is there. What is that? Ma'am, absorption water and salts. No, no, no. Absorption already done. Next step after absorption. This happens in the stomach. What is it? Sorry, it happens in the small intestine. What is it? Ma'am... Uh uh just uh, giving the nutrients in body mode. look at the look at the slide and tell me yes ma'am assimilation ma assimilation okay so remember the order boys ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and adjustion or excretion okay okay All right. next question the largest gland in the human body is? Um, Whose turn is it now? Ma'am, Anubhav. Tell me, Anubhav. What is the largest gland in our body? Ma'am, is it liver? Who answered this? Ma'am, Anubhav. Okay, okay, fine. Yes, it is liver, Anubhav. Very good. Okay, next question. The stomach releases hydrochloric acid and dash juices, which act on the food. Uh, Ma'am, what's the last part? Dash? The stomach releases hydrochloric acid and dash juices which act on the food mom like uh, mom which uh, which what is it it was not here the stomach releases hydrochloric acid and dash juices which act on the food what juices Mom, um, the mucus? No. Next person. Um, 
और जूसेस आते हैं डाइजेस्टिव जूसेस वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन वाई वॉट एपन ओके सो डाइजेस्टिव आंसर वेरी गुड नेक्स्ट पर्सन The inner wall of the small intestine has many finger-like outgrowth called as. Ma'am, villi. Villi. Very good. Next person. Amoeba digests its food in the dash. I mean the. Uh, mm, I mean the food vacuum. Food vacuum. Very good. Okay. Now tell me if it's true or false. Next person. Digestion of starch starts in the stomach. True or false? What, ma'am? Digestion of starch starts mm -hmm. in the stomach. False, ma'am. Why is it false? Then where does it start if not in the stomach? Ma'am, first digestion process is start in the mouth, buccal cavity. Oh, very good, very good, very good. Okay. Okay. So next question: the tongue helps in the mixing of food with the saliva. True or false? Yes, ma'am. True. Very good. Next, the gallbladder temporarily stores bile. Hmm. Mom, uh, true. Why is it true? Oh uh, no, mom, it uh, it's false. Mom, it permanently uh, uh contents. Permanently, no, it is not permanently because the bile is secreted only when there is food in our system. So the bile will be secreted only for our food. So if we don't have food, the bile won't be secreted. So it's only temporary. Okay, so bile is retained in the gallbladder, which is a little sac-shaped organ. Okay, it is under the liver. So it will secrete before, but before it, it should be allowed into the gut. That's basically there should be food in our system. Okay, simply it won't just do it. So it uh, is true. Okay, it's not false. It is temporarily there. Okay. Uh, next question. The ruminants bring back swallowed grass into their mouth and chew it for some time. Yes, ma'am. True. Okay. Next question. Um, where is fat completely digested in? Um, in the small intestine, ma'am. In the small intestine, very good. Okay. Um, next question. Water from the undigested food is absorbed mainly in the dash. Uh, I'm in the like uh, I'm large intestine. Large intestine, very good. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell me which part of the alimentary canal is involved. Okay. So which part of the alimentary canal is involved in absorption of food? Ma'am, small intestine. Very good. Chewing of food. Next person, chewing of food. Ma'am, buccal cavity. Next person, very good. Next person, killing of bacteria. Mm. Ma'am, it's in like a uh, body part. Yeah. Chewing of. Uh, Mom, uh, hydrochloric acid in stomach. Yeah, you need not say hydrochloric acid in the stomach is enough. Okay, very good. Next, complete digestion of food. What, ma'am? Where does complete digestion of food take place? Ma'am, small intestine. Sorry, large intestine. Okay, it's actually small intestine. Okay, because only large intestine. Water is absorbed. The complete digestion takes place in the small intestine. Okay. Uh, formation of feces take place in.
Ma'am, Anas. Large intestine. Okay, large intestine only is formation of feces safeness. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Um, I want all of you to tell me. I need all of you. Okay, whoever is the next person answer. Just give me one similarity between amoeba and human being digestion. One thing that is similar in both. Mum, the like, uh, Mum, uh, the amoeba like, uh, takes the uh, it takes its uh. Is mm, it takes its pseudopia out and uh, just like we our hands does to grab the, to catch the that was just an example that is not part of digestion right because we don't need hands for digestion so how can it be similar um, uh, the the uh, food vacuum and the buckle cavity food vacuum and the buckle cavity very good that's, that's interesting nice okay next person can you tell me one difference between amoeba digestion and human digestion? Uh, Ma'am, difference. Um, Ma'am. Okay, next person. Ma'am. Ma'am, amoeba injures the food by its pseudo body, where is uh, uh, humans do, injures the food by its buccal cavity? Very good, very good. Okay, so you can see there's no pseudo body. We don't have any pseudo body. Okay. Yes, Fine. And um, yeah, that's it. We are done with this lesson. Okay, I hope this lesson was interesting and uh, I hope you guys understood this lesson. Do you have any doubts in this lesson so far? No, ma'am. No. Okay, so I will like upload this whole uh, PPT, sorry, this whole slides in the resources page. You can uh, view it for your test purposes and everything. And if there's any doubt, you can um, ask me in WhatsApp. I hope you have noted down everything, your homework and everything. Everything's done, right? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank ma'am, uh, ma yeah. uh, what was the first question? Write about yes. digestion. This one. Oh, digestion yes. ruminants. Ruminants, okay. All right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. Thank you, class. See you next class. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am.